In this presentation, we'll review factors that affect sleep and strategies you can implement to enhance sleep. What we do during our waking hours can have a big impact on our sleep. Exercise, one of the best things you can do for overall wellness, is no exception. Exercise can improve alertness, energize you, and even speed your metabolism. All great benefits, but exercising too close to bedtime can interfere with our ability to slow down and sleep well. If you have trouble falling asleep and staying asleep, aim to finish your workout five to six hours before you plan to go to bed. Our food choices can also influence sleep. Later in this course, we'll discuss how the quantity, timing, and quality of our food can either promote or interfere with restful sleep. For now, start to pay attention to what you're eating or not eating as you wind down your day. Caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol are substances that disrupt normal functioning of the central nervous system and can lead to less restful sleep. Caffeine and nicotine are stimulants that can interfere with falling asleep, while alcohol is a depressant that typically leads to nighttime awakenings. We'll look at these substances and their effects on the body and sleep in more detail later in the course. If you use any of these substances, start to observe how they affect you and what role they might have in your ability to sleep well. Are you using them or are they using you? A number of biological factors allow us to naturally feel more alert or sleepy at different points in the day. We have internal clocks that help regulate the timing of these periods, known as the circadian rhythm. The part of the brain that controls our internal circadian clocks also signals body temperature and other changes that influence sleepiness. In general, we feel most alert when our body temperature is the highest. This peaks around 6 p.m. By contrast, we are most prone to sleep when our temperature is lowest. This occurs in the early morning hours. Light plays a role in healthy sleep cycle by reinforcing our circadian rhythm. With exposure to sunlight in the morning, the part of the brain that controls the circadian clock sends signals to raise body temperature and produce hormones like cortisol to help us feel awake. It also delays the release of other hormones like melatonin, which are associated with sleep onset and produced in response to darkness. Medical and other health factors can affect sleep. In the case of medications, always ask a doctor or pharmacist how a drug might influence your sleep. Also, read the drug's package information for any possible interactions or contraindications. Hormones, like the stress hormone cortisol, can interfere with sleep. Women with premenstrual syndrome may experience disruptions in their sleep due to hormonal changes as well. Pre-existing conditions, like medical and mental illnesses, may impair sleep, but it is still possible to improve sleep. Sleep problems may be worsened or caused by underlying sleep disorders. Some examples are listed here. These are health conditions that should be treated by a trained medical professional or counselor. If you are having trouble falling asleep at night and are a regular napper, try cutting out naps entirely for several days and see if that helps you fall asleep at night. However, we may benefit from rest in the mid-afternoon. Siesta cultures and nap time and daycare are examples of this. A short nap of 10 minutes or just brief relaxation can be as effective as actual sleep midday. If you nap, then do so for no more than 45 minutes, no later than 4 p.m. Otherwise, you may enter deep sleep from which you will awake groggy and perhaps feeling more tired. About one third of adults report experiencing some insomnia in a given year. It is a normal response to some major life events. The question is, do you perceive detrimental consequences to sleep difficulties you experience? Poor quality sleep may be related to sleep onset or problems falling asleep. It could also be due to problems with sleep maintenance, waking up and not being able to fall back asleep. Fortunately, there are proven ways to enhance your sleep. Following basic guidelines about sleep environment, consistency, and techniques to enhance quality can improve sleep without medication. 
Your sleep environment should have characteristics that make it easier for you to fall and stay asleep. The room should be dark, quiet, cool, comfortable, and clean. Eye shades, blackout curtains, earplugs, and white noise can reduce disruptions from lights or sounds that you can't eliminate. Humidifiers can add moisture to the air if the room is too dry, and fans can help both with cooling the room and providing a little noise to drown out background sounds. If you have a roommate or bed partner, consider their role in creating an environment that is conducive to your sleep. You may need to negotiate improvements to the sleep space and even their habits. Ultimately, these changes could be beneficial to both of you. Certainly, one of the most important things in the sleep environment is the bed. What do you use your bed for? Try not to give it an identity complex. Make the bed a cue for sleep rather than a cue for wakefulness. After all, a bed is a bed, not a desk, table, or closet. Use the bed only for sleep and intimacy. Get into bed only when you're drowsy. Rely on internal clues rather than the external ones to help determine when you're ready for bed. If you find that you can't fall asleep, or if you awaken later in the night and can't fall back asleep, don't lie in bed tossing and turning. Get out of bed, and if possible, go to another room and do something relaxing until you're drowsy again. Then go back to bed. Repeat this process as often as necessary. Screens and sleep don't mix. Avoid computers, DVDs, cell phones, and all digital devices immediately prior to bed. The light from these devices and their stimulating content can make it difficult to fall asleep. Even if you aren't using it, the glow of a computer screen or the lighted display of an electronic device can be a distraction in an otherwise dark room. If you can't turn the device off completely, cover its display before you get into bed and develop a relaxing pre-bed ritual like a shower or bath, prayer or meditation, reading a book for pleasure, or writing in a journal to help you unwind from the day and to set the stage for restful sleep. Scheduling sleep may seem a little extreme, but it's one of the best ways to give sleep the priority it deserves and to make falling asleep and staying asleep easier. Consistency is important to your sleep schedule. Our body has a need to balance the amount of time we're awake and asleep, called sleep-wake homeostasis. This works with our circadian rhythm to balance when we feel alert and when we feel sleepy. When we've been awake for a long period of time, the sleep-wake homeostasis creates a drive to sleep and also to stay asleep until we've had enough sleep to recover from our waking hours. When you have a regular rising time, yes, even on weekends, Periods of prior wakefulness are consistent from one day to the next. Consistency also helps us become more efficient sleepers. Efficiency can be thought of as the amount of time asleep divided by the amount of time spent in bed. Spending less time lying in bed but not asleep allows you to reduce the amount of time in your day that you allot for sleeping. By implementing techniques like winding down before going to bed, and creating a sleep conducive environment, a regular waking time can help you reach a sleep efficiency of 85% or more. You could use this time saved for activities you enjoy, like going for walks, exercising, or relaxing. Cognitive restructuring is an approach to becoming more aware of our thoughts and modifying them when they are not useful or distorted. When we attempt to make a challenging behavior change or experience problems with something important like sleep, it's easy to focus on the negative aspects of our situation and even blame ourselves. Such negative thoughts are counterproductive. Instead of allowing them to make a challenging situation more so, we can reframe them into positive thoughts that support our goals and are realistic. Can you envision saying any of these positive thoughts to yourself? Take a moment to consider a negative thought about sleep that you've had in the past and how you could reframe it into a positive thought.
We've already mentioned some of the positive relationships between regular exercise, a balanced diet, stress reduction, and sleep. In the upcoming weeks, we'll look at food, alcohol and caffeine choices in detail, as well as practice a variety of stress reduction techniques. The activities in this course are your opportunity to learn more about your sleep habits and to begin to make positive changes toward improved sleep. If you feel that you need more assistance in making these or other changes in your routine, make an appointment with one of the health promotion professionals to develop a plan. This concludes the What Affects Sleep presentation of SleepWell.